enjoying the posters and the festivities and now the program on the May family. Diane Langston, who's going to be presenting for us, has a BS degree from James Madison University in Library Science and Educational Media with a minor in History and an MS degree as a reading specialist from Longwood College. She was a school librarian for 36 years before retiring in 2019. Diane's a member of the Daughters of the American Revolution, the Virginia Genealogical Society, and the Genealogical Research Institute of Virginia. So let's welcome Diane for uh, Heritage Day. Thank you for coming. Three years ago, my husband Jay took a job in the Shenandoah Valley and I retired. And we started to look for land in Rockingham, Augusta, Shenandoah, and we found the perfect 20 acres in Folks Run. This is the view from our front window. We love living in Brock's Gap. What better way to get to know the area than to research a family that has lived in Brock's Gap for over 200 years. I was excited when Keith May asked me to find out more about his ancestor, George May. When I first started my research, Keith and others were getting results back from Y-DNA tests, and the data was confusing. Because these DNA tests led to a complete fundamental change in understanding George May's origins, I want to begin there. Men that descend from a common ancestor from 500 years ago are going to have the same or nearly the same Y DNA. Combine that knowledge with the fact that surnames started to become common in Europe about 1500 AD we can use Y-DNA to sort men into different family groups. I used all three of these strategies of Y-DNA in my research. Number one, there were four different May families living in Rockingham County in the early 1800s. DNA tests show that Thomas May, Adam May, and Levi May were not related to George May, nor to each other. Number two, George May had 12 sons, and their thousands of descendants are spread far and wide. If a man in Missouri matches Keith or Dwight or Jeff, we know that they belong to the George May family. Number three is what pointed us toward Ireland. Keith and other George May descendants matched three men that were not descended from George May. John May came to America about the same time as George, lived in the same Pennsylvania County for some years before moving to Crawford County, Pennsylvania. A history of Crawford County written in 1885 tells us that John May was born in Ireland. John and George may have been brothers, certainly were at least cousins. William May came to America with his family in August of 1820. The ship manifest tells us that William was born in Ireland. And the third DNA match was to a descendant of Thomas May. Thomas was born in Ireland. His grandson, Patty, sailed to Rhodesia and found work and a wife. And Patty's grandson, Peter May, left South Africa and returned to his ancestral home of Ireland and lives there now. George May descendants match no one from Germany. George was Irish. For anyone that has known the May family history for years and is having trouble believing the DNA results, let me just say that I backed this mon monumental change with documents. In the 1880 census, the U.S. government asked residents where their father and their mother were born. Only two of George's 14 children were alive then, Henry May of Rockingham and Benjamin May of Clark County, Ohio. Both answered that their father was born in Ireland. So 65 years after George May died, we have proof that his country of origin 
was Ireland. In the 1700s, the population of Ireland was not all ethnic Irish. In the early 1600s, Scottish families were forced off their land in Scotland and brought to English owned plantations of Ulster to create a buffer against the Catholic Irish. Seeing as how the Scottish were not treated much better than the Catholic natives, resentment built toward the English landlords. After several generations, Word of America and its vast opportunities led the Ulster Irish to start moving to America. I have no documentation proving George May's family was Scottish, but based on his DNA cousin John's Presbyterian Church affiliation and the date of George's departure, I'm pretty confident that George May was one of the 300,000 Irish with Scottish ancestry that departed Northern Ireland before the American Revolution. So around 1758, George May was born in the Ulster area of Ireland, or what we call Northern Ireland. His DNA cousin William was born in Down County, and his DNA cousin Thomas is thought to have been born in Antrim. The city of Belfast straddles the Lagan River and actually sits in both Down and Antrim. In 1815, there was a George May family living in Valley McCarrick, a town on the edge of Belfast in County Down. Maybe this George May was a cousin of our George May? This was not a prosperous time for the common person. Landowners were reducing the size of rented land, making it nearly impossible for tenants to grow enough to live on. Food was scarce, rent continued to go up, and the working class had little opportunities for wealth or change in occupation. The last wave of Scots-Irish immigrants before the American Revolution was from 1771 to 1775. Unlike the early immigrants who left for religious freedom, many now were leaving for survival. It is believed that in just these four years, an additional 30,000 Presbyterian Irish left for America. There were four main ports in Northern Ireland and they had ships leaving frequently for Philadelphia. This is when I believe the teenage George May immigrated. Philadelphia was a main port of entry for the Scots-Irish. What an introduction to the new world. George would be listening and interacting with English, Dutch, Swedes, Finns, Quakers, Swiss Mennonites, Welsh, French Huguenots, Germans, Scots, and Scots-Irish. The Quakers and the early German immigrants had acquired most of the land around Philadelphia, so the Scots-Irish spent some time renting land or working for others before heading west or south. One of the popular, popular temporary homes for immigrants was nearby Lancaster County. George made his way to Lancaster by 1777, where he signed an oath of allegiance to the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. The surviving land record for 1779 shows George in the Strasburg Township. He did not own any land, horses, or sheep. He did have one cow. Lancaster played a large part in the American Revolution. The Continental Government moved here when the British occupied Philadelphia. The citizens of Lancaster supplied men, grain, weapons, tools, and wagons to the Continental Army. In 1783, George May left Lancaster and traveled across the river to the neighboring York County. He was enumerated in the town of Manchester, where he and his family were part of the 1,465 residents. There were 267 houses, 218 barns, 21 mills, 29,000 acres of tilled land, and George May owned none of these. He was apparently renting and living with another family, and he is recorded to have three inhabitants in his family. The excitement of the American Revolution was over. George May most likely was working on a farm. Studies show that of the 1,465 residents counted in 1783, 40% moved away in the next 10 years, and George May was one of those. 
In the fall of 1786, a count was made of all residents in order to levy taxes for 1787. George May owned nothing, and he no longer had that one cow. Like thousands of Germans and Scots Irish, George took the great wagon road out of Pennsylvania and into the Shenandoah Valley of Virginia. About 20 years before George set out on his journey, the Great Warriors Trail had been widened to accommodate wagons, and the Virginia legislature had established rules for keeping the roads clear. Even though George did not own a wagon and horses, he was probably traveling with other families. I'm sure his five children, all under the age of seven, spent a lot of time in a wagon. Can you imagine traveling with five young kids for a month? <laughs> Late in 1786 or early 1787, George May moved from the Piedmont farmland of York County, Pennsylvania, and headed south. We know at least one of the families he knew in York County had already headed down to Shenandoah County. By April 2nd, 1787, George May was living in Shenandoah. Most people moved with family and friends. We know who George was living close to in Shenandoah County, but we don't know of any family connection. He was living mostly among German families. George lived in Shenandoah County about nine years. By 1789, he had bought one horse. His wife added four more children to the family. George still owned no land. From the tax records, we know that he also did not own a mill or tavern. He did not have a carriage or billiard table, and he did not have stud horses. Although George did not own land, using a land ownership map and studying the list of people who were counted on the same day by the same enumerator, we know that in 1796, George was living somewhere close to Henry Roush and Michael Neese. So here's Forestville and 42 continuing up here in the Little North Mountain. So he was somewhere in this neighborhood. He was coming on the same day as these men. Somehow, George was earning money and saving it. Because seven years after moving to Rockingham County, George purchased 131 acres. This land was identified in the Bennett's Run area of Brock's Gap. He farmed, he sired five more children. George no doubt spent most of his time managing his farm but he made at least one trip out of the Germany River area to stop by Michael Baker's store near Lair's Run and buy four gallons of whiskey. <laughs> Even after a couple of years of research, I still cannot confirm if George May was married once or twice. We know that he was married to Magdalena, that she was the mother from at least Joseph on, and that she was born in Pennsylvania sometime between 1766 and 1776. I have yet discovered to discover a marriage record, and I still do not know her maiden name. I know early researchers said her name was Hoffman, but I can find no record of that, nor do I know how they came up with the name. A German George May had ties to the Hoffman family in Loudoun County, but that is not the same George May of Brock's Gap. Documents indicate George was married when he was counted in the 1779 tax of Strasbourg. If George was married to Magdalena then, she would have been no older than 13 years old. Not impossible during that time period in history, but she would definitely have needed permission to marry, which involves more documentation, none of which has been located yet. You know an odd thing? Six of George's kids named a son after their father. Not a single one of the children that I can find named a daughter Magdalena. Much of what has been written about George May and his family said he had 15 children, but the only document that we have that lists the children is a 19, an 1829 deed. Only 14 children are listed. If George May had a son called Adam, then Adam died before his father and had no children. The Adam May that was still alive after George's death is unconnected 
to the George May family, according to the DNA test. Of the 14 children, only two were girls, Molly and Elizabeth. Elizabeth was born the year Molly got married, so they probably didn't hang out together. Three sons of George May died not many years after their father, George Jr., John, and Andrew. George Jr. married possibly twice, second time to Catherine Cook, and had at least seven children. John married Elizabeth Tusing, and up until two days ago, I thought they had seven children. Now, I'm pretty sure that I found one more. Andrew married Polly Sana Frank and then her cousin Peggy Smith. Maybe three children by Polly and two from Peggy. The other sons that lived and died in Rockingham County were Daniel, who married Susanna Summers and had at least seven children. James bought out many of his siblings and bought more land in the Criders area. He married twice, Catherine Tusing and Sarah Shaver, and had at least 13 children. Isaac married Polly Miller and had eight children who were named in a Chancery court case. Henry married Elizabeth Greenwood and six children have been identified. The rest of George Bay's sons left Rockingham County. Samuel didn't go far. He lived in Crab Run, Hardy County, West Virginia. Samuel dated Eve Harless, who was seven years older than him. At age 15, he went across state lines to Maryland to get married. He and Eve settled in Hardy County and had 11 children. After serving in the War of 1812, Abraham moved to Augusta County. He married Sarah Long, was a carpenter, and had seven children. And when he died, his death certificate said his parents were unknown. So I'm guessing Abraham did not keep up with the rest of the family. Now Joseph married three times, had 14 children, and he moved all over. He was in Shenandoah, Rockingham, Augusta, Nelson, Botetourt, Rockbridge, and finally Nelson County again where he was a miller. Molly married Adam Despinay in 1801, moved to Licking County, Ohio by 1810, and had at least 12 children. I believe that Jacob, Elizabeth, and Benjamin all traveled together and ended up in Champaign County, Ohio in 1832. Jacob had married Sally Orball in Rockingham, lived for a while in Newmarket, and then moved to Champaign, later Harding County, Ohio. He had seven children, he must have talked about his life back in Virginia to his kids because on his tombstone, it said that he was born in Shenandoah County, Virginia. Elizabeth married Henry Kreider in Rockingham, moved to Champaign, then to Clark County, Ohio, and then Menard, Illinois. She did not have any children of her own, but she did raise a couple of girls. The youngest son was Benjamin. He was only nine and 10 when his parents died. He was apprenticed at age 11 to a man in Shenandoah County to learn how to manage a farm. By 1832, Benjamin was in Champaign, Ohio, then Clark County, Ohio. Benjamin had his brother-in-law, Henry Kreider, sell his inherited land for him to his brother James. Benjamin married Elizabeth Tizer, moved to Greene County, and had seven children. He spent his life farming. All of you descendants of George May should be very proud of him. He lived the American dream. If George had stayed in Ireland, he would not have been able to choose his job, own a firearm, worship or not as he wanted, and most important, own land in Brock's Gap. Thank you for having me. Are there any questions? In all your research, what was the biggest surprise or anomaly in the DNA or any of it? What, what was the, I know it's been several surprises, but what was the, what was the biggest? Was it the Irish? The, well, the biggest uh, change, of course, was from German to Irish uh, in there. And that was already starting to happen when, I, when Keith brought me in on this. And the other thing that surprised me was the, assigning children to the correct family. 
there were some changes that were made um, on evidence that I found, and I was just kind of surprised. There's still a lot of gaps. I'm, I'm still sure there are things that I haven't found yet. And if anybody has any additional information that I have not seen, I would love to have it, and I'm certainly willing to admit to mistakes and to make changes, because this is an ongoing project. And I want to say that this research would never would have happened if it hadn't been for Keith May, his generosity and his passion for his family uh, was an inspiration to me. And I am really uh, excited that he brought me on to this project. So, Keith, thank you very much. Thank you for doing. So, uh, can I ask you the question of the of the descendants that moved to Ohio? Were there other members of? this area moving at the same time? Oh my gosh, yeah. there were so many families. I just discovered just a few days ago, there was a book written about 47 families that went to Champaign at the same time, I think about the same time as those three. So yes, I did not realize that at first. I was just following the maze, but now I'm starting to realize that a, a huge group of people were moving out of here up into Ohio and Illinois. the different groups of maize, but uh, I've been looking at the autosominal and we've had some very interesting results. There is a descendant of a maize that went out to Missouri and she was working from her direction and working back and I was starting to work this way and the DNA uh, is what finalized it and just in the last few days she sent me an email saying oh my gosh you have just filled in the final gaps of all the DNA matches on the autosomal. She was had these different pieces that matched up. That's amazing. So that's, it, it's, it's making a, the DNA has made a world of difference of connecting some of these people that there were no records to substantiate it but the, the DNA is that final link that points us, or was the original link that points you, and then you start finding documents that help tie it in. Any other questions? Yes. Um, I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about the uh, genetic component of the work. Yes. Um, you mentioned that there are some genetic changes that you can find from the DNA that you have access to. Yes. Um, you have some things that you can do to uh, change that genetic code. Yes. Um, you to hear from you. Yeah, maybe, maybe Then you can mention the ancestry uh, tree that you've done as well. So. Yeah, so when doing this research, it's a lot easier to keep track of everything if it's on a uh, family tree online. So I set up a ancestry tree of the George May of Brock's Gap family. So if you're on ancestry, you can go in there and I've added a lot of extra notes and explanations and you can tie websites from outside I can put them on the tree, on the page there, so I've done that. So I've tried to be, put everything that I've found onto that ancestry tree so that you can um, find more information there. What did I need? I, I think it says George May of Rock's Gap, Scots Irish ancestry. And it, and my sister and I share the, the uh, Ancestry account, so it's actually under her name, so it's going to say, you'll see where it says Lineberger. 